Hello, welcome back. So this is part three of how to actually manage or online sales dinghy with AppSheet. So we, we have run through how to actually uh, target yourself and what is the expectation of this app in the first video. While second video is about how to set up a Google form to be sent out to the customer and how do you use a Google Sheets to uh, compile and structure the data in a way that can easily pipe to AppSheet later. So today we're going to mostly talk about the data tables in AppSheets and how you're going to start from there. Okay, so you can open up uh, AppSheet. So if you have already signed to AppSheet before, you can see all your app download as well as you can create a new app. So in this case, since we already created the data in a Google Sheets over here, you can just go here and say start with your own data. So you can name it whatever you want. And once you choose your data, it should actually link to your Google account and you should just choose the, the name over here and it should actually link to it uh, quite straightforward. I hope, I think this is a fairly straightforward step in the over, overall process. Okay, so that will link your data over. It would take a while for AppSheet to create the data, but uh, it, should, it should not be, uh, most of the time it will not be a problem. If you encounter any errors, just feel free to refresh the app or refresh the page. Okay, so let's go back to our data just now. So for the form response and PROC1, they're usually just there for the calculations. So they're actually not needed, so we can actually hide them. Yep, so we were left with four different tables that we need to include it into our app sheet. So in this case, I have already done the app because, you know, do things in real time in the camera. It's always a bad thing, it almost never works. Okay, so let's go to the first one. So in this case, uh, PROC2 is the read-only table. So if it's different, you might want to change it to read-only because we do not want to alter any of the information from the Google Form and any changes that the customer needs to be done should only be done on the Google Form. In that case, only one person will have access to it. So the people that handles the app on the downstream will not be able to change anything within the form response itself. So let me just do this a little bit. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's go to the second thing you need to see is uh, once you have read only is to view column. So that will be the individual columns that we have over here from A to J. So it should have a few columns. So in this case, you will always add something called a row number. That is when you do not have a very uh, good unique key. So what is the meaning of unique key is that it's something unique to each row. It will appear only once and it will never be repeated. So when you tell the table, I want to uh, go to this value, the table and the program will automatically know which row you're referring to without any confusion. So in this case, the original unique key is usually the row number or the timestamp, but will slightly def uh, redefine over here a little bit. So in this case, uh, you also have to make sure the type, which is make sure the row number is a number, it's always a number. Uh, timestamp is a date time. What's the meaning of a date time is that it has a date and a time, straightforward enough. Uh, he has an email, which is referred to the email because sometimes the re email will be referred to the uh, as a text over here. So you want it as an email because the app will allow you to email the customer automatically afterwards if anything wrong. So let me just do this a little bit. Okay, so we also have to have a name over here. So just to change it as a name so that we know that this is the name of a person and we can actually do something about it later. So this is not... Uh, immediately important. So phone number is a number, stays a text. Of course, you can also change to phone over here if I'm, I'm not wrong. So you can also do that. Uh, but usually when customer handle their phone number, they're always going to be wrong. So you might need to change it a little bit uh, over here. So state is a text. So this is actually the state directly entered from the Google form. So text will be fine. It will not be changed and it will not be customizable by the client. Okay, so postcode. Uh, what is postcode the time? So something wrong with here. So we're going to change it to a number. Okay, so addresses is addresses. This is number, number, number. Okay, so now we are going to go into three different uh, virtual column is what we call. So how to add virtual column is just, you just choose here. So this will add you to a virtual column. So the, the equation is the important thing here. So the first thing is the total price. So we need to know the total prices for each of the sales so in this case what you do is we use uh, something called a lookup so a lookup table is that is that you will take one value you look up another table retrieve the value and store that new value so uh yeah it will look for one column and then you will find the value and you, you will actually extract the value based on that 
So what do we do is that we look at the quantity of item one. So in this case, anything enclosed in a square bracket refers to a column. So what we do is that we want to look for the quantity of item one and want to look for the information in quantity price. So in this case is this column. So we look for, so we so what, what does the thing do is that it look for this. So it extract four and look for here four. And the first thing, the column is for item one, is price for item one. So it looks for item one, so 20. So we got the first value 20 out from the first row. So we repeat the same process for item two and we repeat the same process for item three. And then we do so look up the state, which is the, the, you know, the different state, the different city just now. And we look up another table called uh, shipping cost state. So if, we, if it's in Penang, we'll go and look up Penang, uh, extract the price and store it here. And then we add them all up together. So this will be the total prices. I think straightforward enough. Quantity times individual prices. Uh, and then we add everything up plus the shipping cost. So that will allow you to get the total prices of the overall sales. So per sales, what is the total prices? Second thing is the sales key. Okay, so what's the sales key is actually something unique. So how do you make something unique in this case is to try to extract a way that it cannot have uh, duplicate information. So what I do over here is to change our timestamp into a date. So that is today's date, let's say uh, 7 of May. So 7 of May date, uh, we, we append that to the total prices. And we append that to the name and we append that to the email. So if a person make multiple sales, multiple purchase a single day, unless they do it exactly at the same quantity, which is the total price, and they use exactly the same name structure, uh, so we they are unable to we, we will have of course duplication of all that but i don't think that is a, a fundamental problem itself because in, in the real life nobody should order their thing twice exactly the same way so if someone have done that most likely is what we call repeat order where they have ordered and they forgot about it and they reorder again so in this case i would suggest that uh, you go in and delete the, the second order so you can automatically detect uh, if there is uh what is that called uh, a repeat order within a day because you know it, most most people would not want to do that so if they do want a repeat order they will have to change the quantity of the thing that they order so that we know that it's a separate order and we know that we not process them as duplicates and so on okay so this is how i decided to do my unit key there's many ways to do it you can just use the timestamp that's fine as well but of course you lose the function of being able to uh uh, detect a duplicated order in this case. Okay, so that was done. So the last one is actually uh, a reference. We'll come back to that later. So uh, for in this case, you remember to change the key and the label itself, the sales key. So every time we try to uh, refer, we'll always refer to sales key as the final. Uh, so as, a, as the absolute value, of the, this is the sales. Okay, so we also included the shipping state. I think fairly straightforward. Change the state to key, change the price label forward quantity price same change the key and the label to quantity to be honest the, the label can be anything it doesn't matter in this case because we are just using them as lookup table for one of the calculations over there so this is the slightly important one is the sales status so this actually come from here so this is the table that will come here so in this case uh, everything should be the same however you do you do need to change first uh, sales to a reference we'll come back to that in a while and confirm order payment of delivery delivered change to a yes no so this will only assign a boolean condition where it is a yes or a no no such thing as in between it makes things very complicated if it's in between we just call it as no okay so we are also going to add two more feature column for the calculation downstream because if you want to do a filtering uh, it'll be easier for to add on now so updated on is the last update that the person key in so if a person key in that confirm order this will be the eight, the date that got blocked into the data structure and the day will be exactly the same because uh, why we need to do this is because we just need a different way of uh, filtering down the, down the road. So it's not necessary for now, but you put that in, it will be better for your reference that you know, this status is updated today at 10 o'clock or three days ago at five o'clock. Then you will know that, you know, that, that three days ago is a problem. We need to chase them for that. Okay, so we come back to the reference. So how do you... What's the meaning of reference means that it's a reference table. We need to only uh, include the selection of this column from another table. 
yeah, so the input can only come from a selection of different items. So in this case, the only item that we want to include is from uh, PROC2. So in this case, because we have changed the labeling here, uh, the sales key can only be the sales key that we put in PROC2. So it can only be any of this over here. I think that makes perfect sense, hopefully. Okay, so that's basically the column and the column structure that you need to include. So just for a recap from the uh, Google Sheet here, we actually pipe it individually by syncing a Google Sheets into App Sheet. That should give you one or two tables over here. What do you do to add tables? Just go to add tables and just, uh, just select this and add the different tables over here. So that's fairly straightforward. Once you added the table, remember to change all the column to the proper data type. Uh, do uh, extra total price and do an extra sales key. This one, uh, once you get the reference row, this will get generated itself. So no need to, no need to worry about it. Uh, for shipping costs, just change the key and label. No need to worry about it. Quantity price, change the key and label to either here or you can actually change it to either one. It doesn't really matter in this case. And, and for sales status, of course, you have to change this to a reference table, which will generate the visual column that you see just now. Change all this to a Boolean, uh, updated and add these two feature column in your uh, data table. So that will at least have a base that you can base on to do your app later on. Okay, so that's uh, what I have for at least this video. We'll come back in the part four to, to actually know a little bit about the user experience. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye.